Hello friends. So today we are discuss another problem from the combinatorics series, and this is a problem from Code Forces round six hundred nineteen, and it's a C problem, but the rating of this problem is seventeen hundred, I think. So yeah, seventeen hundred. So we'll solve it out, and this problem seems very difficult, but it has a very clean solution, and it uses a very simple technique. So I'll tell you how to solve this problem, and then in the later video we'll talk about how to find out NCR. Using factorials and different formulas. Uh, so I will tell you two three methods and let's discuss this for problem first. So Ayub thinks that he is a very smart person and he creates a function f s where s is a string or like binary string and the function f s is equal to the number of substrings in the string s that contains at least one symbol that is equal to one. Which means that uh, like if you input any like like binary string. s in this function it will tell you the number of substrings which has at least one in it so as you can see if uh, like you input some substring like this or like some string like this it will tell you the number of substrings which has at least one one in them so as you can see this substring has one in them this 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 and this so this is counted then this alone cannot be counted because this substring as a whole cannot it it doesn't contain one but this can be counted this can be counted and this can be counted now for the other part as you can see now this can be counted this and this and now as you can see other cannot be counted okay so because if you start at this point then there are no ones for the so these are the total number of substrings which is like 3 plus 5 plus 3 uh 8 9 10 so that's the answer for this but uh, what you can see in this uh, the question statement ask you as you can see the total number of 12 for this now ayub also thinks that he is also smarter than mohammed uh, then so he give him two integers n m m and for all the binary string s of length n which contain exactly m symbols equal to 1 you have to find out the value maximum value of f s what this if this means that you have some string which means that there is some string of length n and that length n string consists of exactly m ones in it and you have to find out that whatever string you can form of length n which has exactly m ones in that among all the possible binary strings you can form you have to find out the maximum value of fs among all the binary strings so as you can see if uh, if you understand this example i'll tell you this example uh 3 1 the first example which is 3 1 which means that you have you have given us binary string of length 3 and there is only one one in that string so the possible binary strings can be as you can see it can be 1 0 0 it can be 0 1 0 it can be 0 0 1 which means that you have to find out all the possible binary strings which consist of only like 1 1 and uh, you have to find out among all the binary strings what is the like what is the possible fs for all the binary strings and what is the maximum possible fs for all among all the binary strings so as you can see for this uh, the fs value is the number of substrings which has at least one one so this is one uh, like this is one substring this is another and this is another so answer is 3 for this and uh, okay this is for 3 for this as you can see there is uh, one substring like this and another like this then there is one more like this to two and answer is for this is for four and then this is the answer is uh 3 so the maximum among all of them is four and i think so that's the answer for this yeah four is the answer so i hope you understand what the problem statement is asking you to find out then you have to find out the maximum value of fs fs now you can pause this video out and try to solve this problem on your own but i'll tell you how to solve this problem now so uh there are two three test cases you can draw this like how i approach this problem is uh let's assume that i have some string uh, of length 5 and then i have four ones i can put that and like there is only one zero so as you can see if there is only one zero i can put like this or i can either put put like this uh like now if you find out the total number of substrings which has the the answers uh like the total number substring which has zero in it like the total number substrings which has at least one one in it you if you find out the answer which is 14 for this 
and same it is 14 for this and if you also shift one zero again the answer is again 14 for this so which means that if there is only one zero then if you shift out that zero then the answer is always 14. cool now uh, like you can draw this test cases I, I found out the answer for this so that's why i know this answer but you can also draw this test cases you have just you just have to find out the number of substrings which has at least one in one one in them okay now as you can see if the total number no other case can be you have two zeros now if you have two zeros you can place it like this zero zero one 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 or you can put it like make it continuous only but put it like this or uh, sorry there is only two zeros or three like five numbers so five digits yeah or what you can do you can also put it like this yeah if you find out for all of these values the answer for this is i think so 12 but this is also 12 and for this it's 30. now as you can see if i put all the zeros again so i have found out the answer for them in my paper uh, i'm not actually finding out the answer again and again because i know that i have some paper i've written down the, those answer that's why i know the answer is for 12. so i can also find out the answer for this as you can see so uh, let's find out the answer for this so it's like this so how to find out the number of substrings you always fix one end and try to find out for the other ends so if i fix out this first end this this can be possible substrings which means that it starts from this and end at this point start at this and at this point start at this and at this point okay now start at this point this this and this so now start at this point this this and this start at this point this this start at this point this if you add all of them the answer is 12. Okay. for this is also 12 but this is for 13. now as you can see if i take the whole two numbers two zeros as a group then because the actually form out a group they they actually the answer is 12 only but if you separate them out then answer is 13 which is increased then the other thing i like the other intuition i got the answer is because there can be a lot of cases which means that there can be a lot of cases in which there is only one one in that substring two ones in that substring and so on so why not just find out the answer using this formula in which i find out total number of substrings total possible number of substrings and then remove all the substrings which doesn't have any zeros or like which doesn't have any one sorry which means that if i find out the possible total number of substrings and remove out only those substrings which has no ones in them which has which means that they consist of only zeros then i find out the all the substring which has at least one one in them so that's also a good formula pretty good formula for that and to find out all the possible substrings the answer is just i have told you in the previous video n into n plus one divided by two if you haven't watched that video you can watch that video out okay now if i have some string and i have to find out the number of so this is total number of strings minus the total number of substring which has like only zeros uh number of substrings uh substrings which has only zeros so as you can see if if i put all the zeros together then they will only form a continuous substring which is like small okay so but if i put them separately then they will be form a large substrings and thus that's the whole point for this problem what you can do here is you can like put all those numbers at a different places and that will give you the two maximum number of substrings now what you can do here is let's assume that uh, you have some places which means that or i can give you some example Let's assume that I have five ones and you have 10 zero or like the total length is 10 and you have, you have to put five ones. So which means that I have five ones. If I have five ones, now I have to put like the, how many zeros are left? Five zeros in between these five ones such that if I put, so now how many places are there to place zeros because it's a binary string. I have this place, this place, this place. It's actually place, which means that I can put continuous zeros in this place, like this. So I, I'm considering this as a one whole section. As you can see, the total number section is the total number ones plus one. So if I have like M ones, then M plus one are the number of positions I can put it, like place zeros. So if I have, let's assume that if I have 
like if I have six zeros, I can put one zero at every position, and I will get these total number of like positions or total number of strings of zeros. And then I can find out that how many zeros are there. And then if I find out that okay there are this number of groups I can form. Now from among all of these groups, I can put these zeros in there in these groups. If I put these zeros in this group, I can find out the total number of substrings of length these number of zeros. Because see, in the end, and I have to find out the total number of substrings consisting of only zeros. Total number of substrings. So as you can see, if there is like this three zeros here, then one again. Then there is like three two zeros again. Then one again. Then again two zeros and one again. Then total number of substrings consisting of only zeros is like this. I can consist. I can take like this. I can take like this. I can take like this. So total number of substrings consisting of total zeros is I have to find out the total number of substrings which consist of these numbers. Like how many zeros are there in between? And then if I know the total length of these zeros, I can use the same formula. Total number of substrings. If I have, if I know all the, like because all of them are zero, the total number of substring is n into n plus one divided by two. And n into n plus one is the length. N into n plus one divided by two. N is the length of this whole substring. So if I know the, know the length of these substrings, then because I want to maximize the total number of strings, the total number of substrings, I, I should put them separately. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, how many? Because we know we have n plus one positions to put these zeros. Now what we can do in these positions, we have to put zeros. Now I'll tell you how to put out these zeros. So as you can see that now let's assume that we have five ones, and now let's assume that we have. Uh, thirteen zeros left. We have to place thirteen zeros. So we we should equally place the zeros. If we place all the zeros on this point, then it will be like we are placing continuous zeros and then they are continuous one, which is bad because it will only give you thirteen possible like thirteen lengths. So thirteen and thirteen plus one divided by two total number of substrings you get. But but what is better is you divide them equally because as you have also seen in the previous example which you have solved. Placing all the zeros continuously and placing the zeros differently will give you the maximum result if you place the zeros differently. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll place the zeros if like equally. So first try to place because there are m plus one places to put zeros. What you can do? Try to place them as equally as possible. So first place them like this: zero, 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 zero. So six zeros are left. Gone. Then again put zero, 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 zero. 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 Now twelve zeros are gone. One more zero left. So put one zero again. So what are the other left? So try to put like if they are fourteen, then there is like I put one zero here, one zero here. If they are fifteen, one zero here, one zero here. So as you can see now, we know that the total number of zeros stretches are like this. So there are three. As you can see, if if there are like fifteen, then I have three stretches which consist of three zeros, and I have three stretches which consist of two zeros. So I know the total number of substrings for this. If I know the length of this stretch, it is two. And how many stretches are there? Three. So for finding out the number of substrings for one stretch, it is n into n plus one divided by two. And how many stretches are there? Three. Same. How many number of stretches are there with with three zeros? Three. And for all of these three zero stretch, what is the total number of substrings? Three into four divided by two. So it will give you total number of substrings which consist of only zeros, and total number of substrings in total is equal to n into n plus one divided by two, which is like because there are fifteen zeros, and there are like five ones, so it is equal to twenty. The length of this is twenty, so twenty into twenty plus one divided by two. There are total number of substrings. If you subtract total number of substrings minus only substring which consists of only zeros, then you find out the maximum. Number of substrings which consist of at least one, and that's the whole answer for this problem. If you rewind this video or if you draw these test cases, more test cases, then you will become more clear with this problem. So I'll take it out of the code part now to even make it more clear. The code is also very simple. It's just like an O of one solution because you are not doing anything. So what you are doing is you are given the input of n and m, and group. How many groups are there? How many positions are there? So it's m plus one as I've told you. M is the total number of ones. So m plus one positions I have. If I have m plus one positions, 
I will have to find out how many positions are there in which I have to because let's assume that if I have m plus one groups and I I have uh, so or for example let's assume I have six positions to fit and I have fifteen zero so I'll first divide out fifteen divided by six which is like equal to twelve or oh, sorry two so which means that this is two which means that I have two positions or like or everything will have two zeros but if I do fifteen mod six then it will give you three, which means that, but for three positions, I have to put one more zero extra. Everywhere, there are two zeros, as you can see, but because there are more three, which means that three zeros are also left, then I have to put three zeros somewhere else. And thus for all of these zeros, the total stretch will increase by one. And which means that there are, so the total number of groups are M plus one. So M plus one groups are there, but for the first three groups, we have the stretch equal to two plus one. And for the rest of the stretches, the total length or total stretch of the stretch is only this. So I hope you get the intuition how to solve out this problem. The code is also just finding out these values only. Group one, group one, which means that the total number of groups which has this number of uh, like zeros. So it's just zero plus one. And the other is left. Left means that how many groups are there? Uh, as you can see, if you find out total number of zeros mod this groups, you will give three, which will tell you how many groups will have extra zeros. And that's what I found out. And the other group will have only this zeros amount of, which have only these two amount of zeros. And the total length of those groups is total number of groups minus the left groups. And the final answer is N12 plus one divided by two, which is the total number of substrings minus the total of substrings for all of these two possible groups. So which are, what I have told you, find out total length of those substrings n into n plus one divided by two into the total number of possible substrings are there. So that's what I find out n into n plus one divided by two into total number of those substrings and same for that and subtract those answers from the total number of substrings and that's the answer. Uh, this is also a little bit confusing, but if you draw this test cases, it will become more intuitive. It's a 700 problem. So you might get some little bit confusion, but it's very simple if you understand the logic. I hope you get the intuition and the solution and the code itself. The code will be in the description of this video. Ask the next one. Keep coding. Bye.